Okay, so I'm Robert Young and I'm the regional franchisor for Jim's Fencing in New Zealand. Oh, I got involved about two years ago. Uh, I had about six months due diligence before that. So I feel like I've been in a bit longer than that. And uh, I discovered this business through a, a business partner of mine and another business who owned Jim's Mowing. And over a long time, he was telling me about it and telling me about it. And the more I learned about it, the more I can understood why it's so successful and uh, in the end decided to invest in it myself. So I was in mergers and acquisitions, so I've been professionally buying and developing business since 2006, and before that I was in software for 20 years, which I deeply regret now, because that was 20 years wasted. Um, but um, yeah, when, when, you, uh, when I was acquiring businesses for investment bankers and we had an investment group, I'd been interviewing businesses professionally to look uh, for acquisitions as a profession. So when I discovered gyms, I'm not coming from an uneducated position. The more I learned about it, I was like, wow, what an opportunity. And, and that's with a lot of experience, you know. It wasn't sort of a naivety or um, some sort of uh, blind uh, buying into some sort of uh, religion or something. It was more a case of, um, wow, this really works. It's really evenly balanced. It's really well balanced for everyone involved. And um, I can understand clearly why the franchisees join. And I think that's a really good place to start from if you're going to be a franchisor. Um, it was the fairness. It was the, it was the balance. I talked to franchisees. I talked to franchisors. I talked to divisional people. I talked to people that left the business. Um, I watched everything that was available on YouTube, which is a lot. And, um, and the research I did, and, and even some of the guys, I got their books out of them. So when you're looking at a business, there's always what it appears to be. And then when you look at the P&L, you get the real story. Uh, which is actually, there's a lot more um, uniformity to business than people think. And uh, so, but mostly, mostly it was just people, just talking to people who had been in the business or were in the business and what their experience was. Um, and you never keep all the people happy all of the time. Um, but the system works. It's really well balanced. You give this, but you get that. We take this, but you get that. You know, it's, it's all very even. A lot of business deals are like this. A lot of franchises are like this, um, but Jim's, I think, has got a really nice balance, which is proven out in the fact that we've now got 5,000 franchisees. You know, that's 5,000, I would say, wives and husbands, 5,000 lawyers, 5,000 accountants that have all had a look at our stuff and have said, yep, that's the one. So I think that tells you a lot. You can take a lot of confidence from that. Right, so Jim's fencing, I guess the, the product, the thing that Jim's businesses all have in common is we get in a vehicle and we go somewhere and we give a service. Um, so whether that's a fence or a handyman service or a mowing or a cleaning, um, the principles are the same. And the way we, um, the fees they pay and, and, and all that's all very well and fine. What's more important and some that really impressed me is that Jim looks into every complaint himself personally. Now, I don't know of any business that does that except Jim's. Most of the time in my experience, you know, particularly in software, for example, the CEOs hardly leave their polished surroundings, and you know they think they're doing a favor if they talk to their lower staff, never mind the customer. Um, this is very different, it's almost the opposite. So I really uh, like the idea of that. So the product itself being fencing is almost irrelevant. The key is, are we doing it to a standard? Are we, you know, is the customer happy? Because if the customer's happy, everyone's happy, all, all the way to Jim, myself, the franchisee, the customer, everyone's happy. But if the customer's unhappy, everyone's involved. And, you know, we have a proper warranty fund, you know, we have proper guarantees for what we do. There's, you can always talk to people like me about the franchisee if you're not getting the response you want. You know, there's, there's layers of support for the customer. Um, and that's borne out, again, this is the idea of this balance. What we see on the other side is we don't get hardly any bad debts. Now, we know that independent fencing contractors and independent handyman have a, have a real problem each year collecting all the money they're owed. Well, we don't get that because we're a corporation and they, they tend to treat us a lot more fairly. Um, so again, is that, is that balance coming into it? You, you, everyone's winning, everyone's happy, and that's the essence of a good business deal, is everyone knows what each other's getting, properly understands what each other's getting, and they're okay with that. That's a good deal. There's none of this uh, imbalance that you see in a lot of, especially smaller franchises, because of course the franchisees have got to pay the bills at the end of the day. If you haven't got enough people to share the bills with, it's a lot less effective. Well, Jim's already at that scale. And I always use the call center as a good example. You know, for I think the tech bill is 48 bucks a month. And for that, you have an absolute top, top quality 0800 call center out in front of your business, fielding your calls. There's just no way you can do that by yourself, no chance. And the, and the people that they're calling in the call center are in head office, 
they're inside the business. They're not running off a script in some faraway land. You know, that's a big, big advantage. And uh, that's something your competitors can't do. And at the end of the day, um, to make more money, you need competitive advantage, especially if you want to make more money on a consistent basis. This is one of our competitive advantages. You know, the warranty is our competitive advantage. The, the fact that in 24 months' time, they'll go, like for me, for instance, I'll go, oh, we'll get, that, we'll get that guy back that did that job for us. Now, what was his name? Richard. Robert? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, he was at Jim's. They ring the 0800 number. Oh, I see that you're Robert Young's customer. Oh, that was his name. Can you send him back? Now, if you're by yourself, they're just going to get quotes again. That's the difference. So that makes a big impact on your overall profitability. And that's what we're all here for. You know, it's not a, we're not here to give each other hugs every day. It's, we're all here to make money from franchisee to gym. And it's great that we can be honest about that. And we don't suffer from that, that uh, corporate culture where everyone has to be rah, rah all the time. We just get the job done, do a good job, keep the customer happy, and we're off to the next job. One of the reasons I got into the uh, fencing and handyman is I looked at the current market, like uh, Builders Crack, uh, uh, Dot NZ is, is uh, uh, all the tradies post their sales on there, and the customer comes in and tries to figure out who the person to go with is, but it's really difficult to do so because the star rating's broken, everyone just gets their cousins to fill out the forms for them. Um, the, the tradie has to pay 20% of every invoice to, to the software. The customer doesn't know what he's getting, so they're not really happy. They got, there's no real guarantee on anything they get done for themselves. The tradie has to compete immediately with other tradies, all trying to be as cheap as he can, and then he's got to pay 20% for the privilege. So it doesn't really work for either. So I saw that gap in the market, and that's really the market leader. That's where a lot of the jobs, the majority of the market share of the jobs are going to. And the customers are not happy, and the tradies are not happy. So counter to that, the gyms model is fixed fees, which is really unusual in franchising. So fixed fees means if you work 30 hours this week or 70 hours this week, you pay the same fees. So everywhere else, when you're paying a percentage, and I used to be involved in another franchise where we took 3% of revenue in franchise fees and 2% in marketing contribution. So that's 5%. So if you work 30 hours this week, we'll take this much off you. If you work 70, we're going to charge you more money because you worked harder. That's mental, right? But Jim's doesn't do that. You've got your fixed fees. Now, as uh, is the intention of most of my franchisees, if you end up with a team of five people running around your town, you pay the same fees as a one-man band. Right? That's a massive difference to your upside. And Jim's philosophy, uh, which is one of the philosophies I really like, is that it, you, you're the one who's driven the extra value. We've supported you in the same way, but you've driven the extra value. You've done the 70 hours, and you get all the benefit. Um, another example is that uh, along the same lines, in New Zealand, we have a really important relationship with Bunnings. Now, it sort of works nicely, you know, both being Aussie companies and Bunnings know who we are in Australia and they know the massive business we are. So we get a, what do they call a tier one commercial discount. It's the biggest discount anyone gets at Bunnings in New Zealand. And um, the franchisee captures all that margin because we don't get a kickback, we don't take a retention, because that would compromise our relationship with a franchisee. Now I'm ringing them up saying, how much wood have you sold this month? Well, that's no use, right? I want to talk about his business. When I call my franchisee, how's business going? Do you want to try this? We've got this new marketing idea. One of the guys have learned this, so I want to share that with you. Um, and these are the conversations about how to improve their business, not how much or how little money they're making me. That doesn't come into it, because the fees are fixed. And that's the same across all our divisions. And it's one of the key things I really, really liked about the gym system, which is why I invested in it. So the services that Jim's Fencing in New Zealand offer is everything from your standard paling fence, which is always a question of how cheap per meter can you do it, all the way up to some beautiful stuff we've done with rockeries and feature fences. Um, people have, uh, inside the house for instance, you know, everyone knows about the feature wall, but what not a lot of people know is some of the flexibility and ideas we have around the fencing they might have. Like, uh, see-through glass balustrades have become very popular when you want to maximize the view. Um, so when we quote for someone, sometimes uh, we actually end up doing a different fence than they originally envisioned because we've got the ideas. Um, all of the people they'll deal with at Jim's Fencing cannot just put up a fence. They are fences. They understand fencing. Uh, we have a couple of guys in the team who are specialists in automated gates. Uh, all the way up to a very high commercial level. Uh, Malane Cray now, for instance, one of our franchisees in Auckland, he did the gates on the main freight. And if you go out to main freight by the airport and see their gates, I mean, they're about as big as it gets in New Zealand. And as most things technical, it's a lot more difficult than it looks. 
because everything has to, it, it, you've got to be very particular and finicky and, you know, all the lines are perfect and everything's completely symmetry, you know, great symmetry. And if you're going to be in fencing, this is the mentality you've got to have because you can't go, oh, that'll do. Because there's so many straight lines, you can tell a fence that hasn't been done properly. So bringing that level of skill, we tend to do more feature fencing, more high quality fencing, add value to the house rather than just fill a gap with, with, with a pine um, a fence. But you know, we've got to do those as well. And the main things when it comes to those simple fences is being really efficient. So how many meters an hour can you do? That's a whole market by itself. And then over here, we have certain customers where what they're really interested in is adding value to the house overall and giving it that wow factor, very different priorities. Uh, but we've got them all covered because, um, you know, uh, standard fencing is in high demand and feature fencing is the, the passion though. That's what everyone wants to be working on. And uh, because of our handyman division and our other divisions, we can do much more than, than that while we're there. Um, and also in the handyman brand, for example, we have qualified builders. Uh, so we could even renovate your house while we're building your fence. Someone's mowing your lawn, someone's cleaning your house, someone's grooming the dog, right? So uh, you just need to call 0800 454 654 and get whatever you need sorted out. And it's covered in your same guarantees and the same warranties on the same 0800 number. There's that team you can call about any of these services uh, and fencing's are obviously included in them. Okay, so one of the key reasons people select Jim's Fencing is because we have a, a complete warranty system. So uh, just locally, actually, we, I think we have about, I think at the last time I looked, there's about 62 grand in our warranty fund. It's just sitting in a bank account, not bothering anyone, just sits there in case a customer actually really needs it. So recently we had an example where we built a fence for someone and what he asked for and was quoted and supplied wasn't the picture he had in his head. <laughs> it's a pity we can't break, uh, read people's minds sometimes, but uh, that's how it goes. So, so he actually, in the meantime, had relocated, taken his franchise with him and relocated to a, a different town because they wanted to live in the country with their family. Really nothing to do with us, it's just what he wants to do in his life. And there's not many businesses you can just transfer towns and carry on, but you can with us, which is, and that's, that's a big advantage because most businesses get you stuck places. Um, so, and this person had this idea that he had a problem, it wasn't what they envisaged. So of course they call us. Now the franchisees moved on, the, the business owner has moved down country. Well, I've just been to visit him physically and we, we'll get, we, we're gonna give him his vision so that you know, he actually is a happy customer because that's all we really care about at the end of the day. And the warranty fund allows me to have that cash on hand to just get him sorted out without having all kinds of emails and trying to do everything all at once. Let's just make the customer happy first and then we'll, we can sort out what we need to sort out later. And uh, again, there's very few, very few businesses that do that. You know, there's that separate bank account just sitting there for this very purpose. And it might be 10 years later. It could be five years later. You know, Jim is big on this. I mean, Jim's is, one of the things that is just incredible is that Jim goes into the office. Now, here's a guy with many children, um, you know, 5,000 franchisees. I mean, more money than any of us will probably ever see. And he goes in the office every day and checks complaints. Again, name me another CEO that does that. And he and, and he and he he gives on to me. If I'm not handle, if I'm not handling the complaint exactly correct, he's telling me what to do, which is great, right? Because with complaints, what we want first and foremost is sort them out. So there's nothing like a sense of urgency. So Jim creates that sense of urgency across the board because he knows what's in, that's what's important. And you know, I think a big mistake a lot of businesses make these days is that the leaders haven't dug the fences they haven't dug the holes Jim's dug the holes he's pushed the mower you know he's been there he's he's lived it himself he's not just coming at it in theory which is what most management are doing these days so the customer gets a complete uh, warranty wraparound plus the CEO of one of Australia's biggest most successful businesses will be emailing them about whatever they're not happy about is incredible the reason someone buys a franchise off us is to make more money right that's it if you can't fill that gap, I don't know what you're doing, right? Everyone's always selling dreams and, and so on and so forth. We can't tell people what they'll earn because we're not allowed to by the uh, New Zealand uh, Franchise Association rules, but we can very quickly tell them what our current guys are making and they, through the process they can spend some time with them and the guys are very forthcoming, right? When people are being successful, they love to talk to other people about how much money they're making, so there's no problem there. Um, so making money is obviously the, the, the primary thing. Now the other side of making money is what's the risk profile? So if you buy any other business, you might pay a multiple. You buy the cafe across the road, 
and it makes the owner $100,000, you might pay two, two, 250 grand for that. God knows why you'd want to own a cafe, but you'd pay 250 grand for that, right? Two and a half times multiple. So the day you start, you've got three years in front of you to four to five, because the bank's only lend for five, to pay it off before you actually start making any money. So that's a cafe. Or you can buy a franchise with gyms. So the reason someone would buy a fencing franchise from gyms is a number of things. First of all, we'll talk about just gyms franchises, why you'd buy a gyms franchise. First of all, as a business, it's a very low risk entry level. First and foremost, there's 5,000 other people on the same agreement you'll be on. Right, again, 5,000 lawyers, 5,000 husbands and wives, 5,000 accountants, you know, 20,000 opinions. Everyone's been through an agreement. It's very low risk because so many people are through it and everyone's on the, pretty much the same deal. So even if you've got an existing fencing business or you're in something associated or you're an employee and you want to transition to, to business, well, we give people an opportunity. There's three financial pieces to it. One is you're buying the territory. So you buy a territory and you get all the leads there first and yep, that's your home base. But in reality, you'll be working all over your region because that's how this business works. And your customer base is actually your territory. And the reason that buying it is so uh, such a lovely piece is because you're going to pay for it as a vacant territory, which could be anywhere, you can entry level anywhere to get in, it's as low as 15 and maybe as high as 60. You're going to be in here somewhere, but you're buying a vacant territory. Now you spend 10 years in that territory, right? So we're at the moment, we're in Ponsonby. Now if Ponsonby is your territory, in 10 years time, if I had Rob Fencing Limited, and I want to sell Rob Fencing Limited, I've got a list of customers I can sell to another fencer. And that's it, right? And oh, these are my boys maybe. And I don't know, tens of thousands, another fencer might give me for that. Or I can be Jim's Fencing Ponsonby. And the problem with the standalone business is when I walk out, I am the business. When I, if I'm buying this business after 10 years, it's making the owner $200,000 a year. It has done for five years. He, the owner comes out, I step in, but Jim's is still here, the brand is still here, the customers know us as Jim's, the, the deals are still coming in through the Google and everything. Um, so my risk is greatly reduced buying that business, therefore the business is worth a lot more. So the reason you want to buy a territory, because one day you want to sell it at a big profit. That's, so that's buying a territory, right? You pay, you invest here and you make it here. So there's two other parts that are financial model. One is the fixed fees. So each month you get one invoice on the first and it's got your fees in it and that covers your email, your use of the brand, my support, the rest of the team support, um, your, your websites, uh, your IT department. We have an IT department for our franchisees. You, just like working in a big company. Oh, I can't get my phone to work. Well, we ring the IT department, they get it to work for you. That's a great luxury. And also, when you buy yourself, as I've experienced, you know, when you've got to sort out these little things yourself, boy, you can burn some hours, right? You don't have to do that sort of thing with us because you, what we want and what you want is to be on the job and making money. So, um, so the fixed fees uh, are one of the pillars of success in fencing because the more fences you can put up, you still pay this one fee. So if you put up 100 metres this month or 20 metres this month, it's still this low fixed fee that covers everything and you don't really have to give it much thought. So the harder you work, the harder you, more money you make, not the more money you pay us. That's quite unusual in franchising. And the last component is the lead fees. So each month we attract um, hundreds of new customers. Across the franchise uh, team, you gotta pay for your share of you need that month, because some months you need more and some months you need less. But if you think about this for a moment, it's a great luxury. Because say you've got your team booked out for 30 hours a week, four weeks uh, in, in front of you. Well, what's happening for the other 20? Right, the, you, oh, I need some more customers, I'll just take some more leads. Now the leads uh, vary from uh, anywhere from 15 to $35, but never more than $35, including GST. So if I gave you 10 people who need quotes on fences this week, it's most it can be is $350. Now, if I gave you two grand and all week to go look for them, you couldn't find 10 people in fence quotes, right? And you can just turn on these leads, turn them up and turn them down on our, our zone, uh, all areas or territory you can accept your leads from. So when you're busy, you can basically just turn the noise down on your marketing department. And the other thing, of course, is you're only paying when you get a result. Most people, when they advertise, they have to chuck the bait out there and they get what they get. But with us, you only pay when you're getting something and you only use it when you need it. 
So you keep yourself topped up and every hour you're making money. You're not doing admin, you're not chasing work, you're, you're making money, you're on someone's clock every hour. And that's how you make not just more an hour by being efficient, but more hours billable per week. So when you're by yourself in fencing, you might spend a third of your time chasing work, a third of your time getting organized, and a third of your time making money. Right? Our goal, and what most of the guys get to within a couple of months, is they're billing 80%. So if they're doing a 50 hour week, they should be on someone's clock for 40 hours of that. Man, that makes a huge difference when it comes to the end of the year. When it comes into the, the tax year, you'll see where all these extra hours go. So that, along with the extra discounts we give them, is while it's actually, in business terms, pretty easy to be successful. And if you look at the gym's success rate compared to the urban myth of eight out of 10 businesses fail in the first 24 months, we're the opposite of that. We have nine out of 10 succeed. Eight out of 10 fail, nine out of 10 succeed. And, um, you know, we all know who the 10% who fail are. It's really nothing to do with us, right? The gym system works. Everyone does well. Everyone makes more money, are more efficient. Okay, so the ideal gym's fencing franchisee has got to have two main attributes. Having the skills is just a given. You've got to be a fence person, right? Or we're going to make you a fence person. That, but that's just a given. The other thing that's just as important is business acumen because you are the leader of your business. You're the, you are representa re representative, you're your representative. So when you turn up to the customer, you've got to have that business acumen because that's what customers want. Clear, concise uh, discussion and a very clear picture of what the customer wants. You can't give a customer what they want until you understand what they want. And not a lot of people spend enough time asking questions and qualifying the customer. So we train our franchisees to do that um, so that there's less mistakes. And again, so you're more profitable overall by communicating well than rushing at the qualification point. Just one of those little examples that we teach people that makes all the difference when it comes to their P&L at the end of the year. So the, the person I'm looking for in fencing, uh, first and foremost, first question is, are you ready to be a business owner, right? Have you had enough of renting your life out, which is what having a job is, you're renting your time to someone. You wanna come, you wanna own it. So each year, that's your year. Those relationships, the work you've done, the fences you've put up, they're all yours now, you own them, right? you own that reputation, you're not renting it out. You know, you're not creating that for someone else, you're doing it for yourself. So first and foremost, you've got to be ready for that responsibility. So authority, you have the authority to do whatever you want, that comes with responsibility to do whatever you want. Um, so the fencing skills we can teach someone who's already uh, sort of trade competent. You know, we've had, we had one guy turn up uh, like he was going to Les Mills, and, you know, just that, we were just like, okay, this guy can't do it. And you can tell, when someone picks up a hammer, you can tell, just from the way they do certain things. We tell very quickly, and we're looking for people who can actually make the customer happy. So that's, you've got to have the skills. But the thing I'm really qualifying is that business acumen. And you don't have to have it today, but if you've got a good attitude, I can teach you this, because that's my role. So I'm looking for someone who's prepared to take responsibility, has got at least a, a starting point that is realistic for us to go here, or again, ideally, they're already in fencing, they already know exactly what they're doing, and what I'm gonna help them with is that business acumen, and then I'm gonna send them the leads they need, and they're gonna do just fine. And that's what we want, happy customers, and we're looking for a 10, 20 year relationship with these franchisees. So this is not about selling them a franchise, what we're gonna do is qualify that we're a good match, and everyone's winning, yep, okay, let's do it. So fencing is a given, that business acumen's the most important part. Right, so one of the other pillars of Jim's group is the induction training. So the induction training at present is held in Melbourne and head office, and head office is amazing. It's uh, like a uh, sort of small university campus. The food's there, the accommodation there, there's a pool for a swim, there's a bar. Don't recommend that, you're on training. Um, but there's all the facilities and it's really, really done well. And I've been through a lot of training courses in my life that I could have done without, right? I actually, I, you know, I've been in business for 30 years and I've, I learned a lot on that training because what you learn is not how to be a fencer or how to mow a lawn. What you're learning is how to be a businessman. We all have one thing in common. We get, a ve get in a vehicle and we go somewhere and give a service. So Jim's has got 30 years experience on how to do this optimally and they teach you that in three days. You know, that, that's a lot of value. So that's your induction training. We'll sit, fly you over to Melbourne, you go over on a Sunday, you come back on a Thursday, and you'll be ready to go. So the other aspect is the fencing training. Now, you can't learn fencing anywhere else but on the job. So what we generally do, depending on your starting level, is we'll either start you working with one of the other guys, um, maybe send you to Australia to work with one of the other guys, 
uh, or go and see the guru. It really depends where you're at. If you're already a competent fencer, then we're going to look at topping that up. So we want to take everyone one or two levels. So it's really personalized, the training that's required, but it's all included in your purchase price. Yep. So your purchase price is going to get you in a uniform. We're going to sign right your vehicle. We're going to give you business cards, just like any franchise. But we're also going to give you the induction training. You'll know exactly how to run your business, what to say to the customers, quoting, tax, that sort of thing. You're going to have my support all the time. And we're going to train you to a competency level so that whatever the customer needs, and sometimes, and this is a key skill, to say no. I don't really know how to do that. It's much better to say so. We can work on that. So obviously we, we, we want to train people to a point and then have them only supply what they're fully competent in because there's plenty of market. You've got to, be, you've got to focus your market on what you're, and really deliver that value and make that customer happy. So when you're ready, you call 0800 454 654 to give us a call uh, or you can go to jimsfencing.co.nz and we'll talk soon.